Hi, my name is Lyndon Edwards and I'm a member of the Redlands Bowl Board and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 97th season of the Redlands Bowl Summer Music Festival. Well, it's a different time this year. As we all know, this is a very memorable year and we plan to have a very memorable summer concert series as well. Just like we've done for 97 years, we are providing these world-class performances free of charge. So we hope that you are at home enjoying the bowl performances with your family and maybe a few of your friends in your backyard. We would like for you to take pictures and share them on social media. Please tag them, hashtag bowl in the backyard, hashtag Redlands Bowl, hashtag bowl family. The bowl is such a very important part of the health of our community. So as you think about where you're going to give this year, please remember the bowl. Your gift is so appreciated and will allow us to continue to provide world-class concerts and entertainment free of charge to our community. For a credit card donation, go to our website at www.redlandsbowl.org or you can mail a check to Redlands Bowl Performing Arts at 168 South Eureka Street, Redlands, California, 92373. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to thank our very special sponsor of this evening's program, Glenn Burnett. Tonight's program is awesome. We are thrilled to present the cool classics with our esteemed maestro, Frank Paul Feta, and virtuoso, Ruslan Birkov. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Frank Feta. And I'm Ruslan Birukov. The piece we just played is called Salut d'Amour, The Salute to Love by Edward Elgar. And it begins our concert for you today 
which is a digital concert. And our concert's going to be about love. It's cello and piano, which is a great combination. And the cello is very lyrical. Very lyrical. Instrument. That's right. And therefore, not only are we including great instrumental pieces, but you'll see on our concert, the cello will play the role of a singer. Correct. And a just, number of times. It's just always good to play music about love, don't you think? Love is what makes the world go round, as they say. Correct. That's right. And especially in this profession that we've chosen of music. And we know that you are all watching this show because you love music and you also love the Redlands Bowl, which has given us this opportunity and which is quite wonderful because by doing it digitally, you're going to have a Redlands Bowl summer season. And that is a wonderful thing. It's always a magnificent summer event. So as the brochure says, you may be in your backyard, you may be in your living room, you may be in your den, you know, but you are enjoying the music, you are relaxed, and we hope that we will not only relax you, but excite you with the material that we're going to do. Our second piece on the concert is a piece by Gabriel, Gabriel Foray, and the Foray is called Après un rêve, meaning after a dream. And I know Ruslan has a wonderful story to tell about the words of this piece. Well, this piece essentially a song originally was composed for a singer. Um, and the story says that the woman, who is the singer, wakes up in the morning after the dream she just saw her husband who died and she hopes she desperately wants to bring him back. So she walks toward the sea, stands on the cliff, and basically sings this a prayer of sort, asking, rising sun, it's a morning, sunrise, rising sun to bring him back. It's a rather tragic song, I have to say, but it's so beautiful. So, it's a tragic song, but it does have sort of a transcendental nature to it, which makes it very satisfying and very, very beautiful. Because she does have this dream, she still has the memories of her beloved. And so we would like to do that for you now. Gabriel Fauré's Après un rêve. After the dream.
Beautiful. I have to marvel how wonderful a vocal piece works with the cello. Well, cello is the closest to human voice. And it's glorious. The, 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 the dynamics and the incre incredible differences in your tone. Thank you. Bring this Thank you, bring, Maestro. It brings, it brings this beautiful piece <laughs> to life in such a great way. <laughs> so you. now we head to a place that's very familiar to Ruslan, and he'll tell you about it. I was born in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan was one of the former republics, 15 republics of Soviet Union. And um, we will perform a piece composed by an Azerbaijani composer. His name was Arif Melikov. And this is a nocturne. Nocturne is a night song. So from the sunrise, we will swing into sunset. It's a uh, piece from the ballet called Legend About Love. It's a very sensual music, uh, I hope. And has a great exoticism too, and there's something that we don't hear that often, so it's nice that we're able to present it on this wonderful broadcast.
This really leaves you in a haze of romance, you know? <laughs> yes, Perfect for those is. evening nights at the ball. When the ball reopens, we should do this again. We should. <laughs> this is originally an orchestral piece. Yeah. Uh, the whole orchestra plays it. It's, and a, this it's is a great piece. It's yeah. just a stunning, yeah. stunning, stunning piece. Excellent. So we travel to Italy. Oh, yes. And uh, we're grateful that we're traveling to Italy. <laughs> and uh, with uh, Nicola Paganini variations. So tell us about this. One of the greatest, perhaps the greatest violinist of all times, uh, surrounded in a cloud of legends and myths. One of the legends said that apparently Paganini sold his soul to dead and to devil in return for his ability to play violin so well. A lot of people were jealous. I mean, they were jealous, not that he sold the soul, that he could no, play but violin. He did, but suddenly he played. <laughs> so, so, well. um, so once, apparently, uh, some of those jealous individuals slightly cut, slightly damaged three out of four strings on his violin. He didn't notice it, picked the instrument, went on the stage and started his performance. First string broke, he kept playing on three strings. Then the second string broke, he didn't stop. Third string broke, and the legend says that apparently he kept playing on one string until the end of the performance. After that, those who were jealous became even more jealous. <laughs> <laughs> um, did they ever learn to play on one string? That's the, uh, that's the question. We well, don't know. Well, you did. Well, he you did. Like, and then he went home and composed a piece, a you set did. of variations. Uh, called Moses Variations, supposed to be performed on one string only, on violin and guitar. So today we will give it a try on cello and piano, and I'll make an attempt of playing on one string only. Yeah, Very just... economical, only having one string, right? <laughs> Good luck to me! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs>
Bravo, Ruslan. Great job. Thank you. On one <laughs> string. Thank heavens on the next piece we get to go back and use the other strings. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder my A string usually breaks more often than, <laughs> That's right. That's right. than <laughs> other strings. So once again, a little nod to Beethoven. And you know, a little anecdote. It's when I conduct at the ball, it's always a, a thrilling moment when I'm on the podium and the moon comes up. And I always wait for it to appear right between the two palm trees. And it's a stunning moment in the evening. The audience can't see it because they're looking toward the stage, but when I turn to the audience, I can see it. It's so inspiring to see this beautiful, beautiful lozenge light, this, this wonderful luminescence coming from the moon right between two palm trees, a perfect uh, California evening, a perfect Redlands evening. So um, here's the Moonlight Sonata. First movement? I guess I will be your audience tonight. That's right, thank heavens. <laughs> you can be the audience of the moon, whichever you wish. <laughs> and we maintain wonderful social distancing <laughs> right here. <laughs> Moonlight Sonata, first movement, Beethoven.
Thank you, my audience of one. <laughs> you know, it almost feels, it's so unusual to clap after half a year of not being. I know, I know, in, in, in a live concert, yeah, yeah it's amazing, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But we look toward the future, but yes. have great memories, and uh, this is a nice way to recall some of those tremendous memories. Now we're going to uh, another wonderful composer. Mm -hmm. In another wonderful country. Think of it, we started in uh, Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Then we went to France. France, then Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Then Italy. Italy. Then Germany. Then Germany. And now, now we're, Poland slash we're in Poland. France. I mean, Chopin spent That's quite right. a bit of time in France as well. He did, he did. He but was still, Polish. He's a, Polish. And a wonderful pianist. But it's interesting, an etude, an etude, if you want to say it in the Italian version, is something to build a lot of technique. It's usually considered an etude is a practice. But in the case of Chopin, they become major musical works. Correct. So for Chopin, it was more of an artist sort of taking a little picture, creating a little mm -hmm. picture in preparation of something major. You know, when artists have to paint a large-scale painting, they paint little exercises of sort. This is not exercise per se. Uh, no, it's an it's individual not. piece. It's, it's, it's a, a beautiful piece. lyric piece, really, right. when it comes yeah. down to a very romantic lyric yeah. piece. Much expression from Chopin, which we always expect. And this particular too, uh, became known as a cello too. It was <laughs> written in C-sharp minor for piano, solo, but in the middle and the low register of the piano. So many listeners suggested and called it the cello too, that reminded them the sound of the cello. Yeah. So in the beginning of 20th century, Russian composer Alexander Glazunov made the actual arrangement yeah. Yeah. of the piece for cello with piano. Right. And just to show how important the cello is to this, you begin without the piano. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> the piece that was originally composed right. for piano. So the cadenza is right at the very beginning the of the piano. <laughs>
Lovely, absolutely beautiful. A romantic piece filled with passion and filled with in, the, the, the melody is just incredible and the nuances. Yeah. Fabulous. He was very young when he composed it. He was actually young when he died. Yeah, he didn't live that long. Didn't live. Yeah, wish he had stayed around a bit, but he didn't. Yeah. Created a huge body of work. Yeah. So we uh, once again go back to Beethoven and a charming minuet. Little impromptu That's moment. Right. And we know that you people are watching this, oh, you, our wonderful fans are watching this in their gardens, in their living rooms, uh, in their dining rooms. So if you feel like dancing the minuet, dance the minuet. <laughs> <laughs> minuet by Beth Houghton. So we hope our audience enjoyed dancing together. That's pretty nice. <laughs> we so, didn't see you, but we know you did. So wonderful, cute. Yeah, yes. cute. It's a beautiful kids, really good. And probably every student, music student, played it at least once. I never learned it when I was there. Neither yeah. did I. This I is never my first learned time. It. I had to use the music as well. I had to wait for all this time to play it, you know. <laughs> so now we're going to take a trip to Spain with a great and colorful big piece by Casado. Gaspar. And, and if you would uh, tell us about uh, this uh, wonderful composer. Gaspar Casado was a cellist, one of the greatest cellists of 20th century. 
and also a wonderful composer. He studied composition with Ravel, one of the greatest impressionists. <coughs> the piece we are going to play uh, called Requiebros, and in Russian translation of the Spanish word, and we have Russian edition of <laughs> we this, do that. We <laughs> of this <do> that. piece. <laughs> so um, it's been translated as memories. However, a wonderful tool called Google Translate <laughs> <laughs> interprets word requiebra slightly different as a amusing flirtos talk of sorts. So it's a, fl it's a flirt very flirtatious memory in that case. We can call it that. Or a memory of flirtation. But this is a very Spanish memory. It's with very Spanish. A lot of passion. A lot of passion. A lot of temperament. Of That's right. A lot of emotion. And the piece has many, many different moods going on. It's, it doesn't stay in one place too long of a time. That's good. Everything comes back, of course, but that overriding sensuality That's is good. always there. And the piece also was dedicated to another one of the greatest cellists of all time and one of the greatest, perhaps the greatest cellist, Spanish cellist, Pablo Casals. And a uh, 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 piece composed by a cellist, dedicated to a cellist, performed by performed a cellist, by a cellist. <laughs> with heavens. maestro conductor at the piano. Thank heavens. <laughs> so here we go.
later we head back to France, Jacques Offenbach, actually. But he was German. He was German. Yeah, but we stick with the cellists. He was a cellist. That he was a cellist. That's true. Very good. Very good thematic. <laughs> a very good tie-in. You know, very good tie-in. And this is a, a lovely, lovely piece, um, um, which we did, very serious for Offenbach, which you think of him as being a, a comic opera Correct. writer. Mm -hmm. but a very serious piece. Two two souls, souls. in heaven. And that speaks itself. It's self-explanatory. Yeah, I, I don't think it's No, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous piece.
So now we go back to uh, Russia for this. But Russia and the United States, in a way. And Los Angeles in and particular. And Los Angeles in particular, that's right. Uh, Sergei Rachmaninov, a uh, Russian immigre, but he lived in Beverly Hills and spent the rest of his life, actually became an American citizen. That's correct. Yes, and uh, it, again, interesting, we're doing a vocalese, which was originally written right for voice, voice and orchestra, mm -hmm. but now the cello becomes the voice again. Cello is as the closest to human voice. Right. Can and we be a, better match? It's a wonderful partnership. It's, uh, and we have a conductor. Yeah. There we go. Play we're, the orchestra. We're blessed. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we have all the right equipment. <laughs> so we probably need to explain also what a vocalist is. Oh, yeah, a vocalist. Yeah, a vocalist. It's basically an exercise. It's, it's an exercise. Singer. There are no words in this no. uh, song. If oh, you, oh, right. oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. So the singers just simply sing extremely It's also very ah. good. The singers don't have to learn any words. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's perfect. Through the universal language, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Huh? <laughs>
We hope you like the vocalese of Rachmaninoff, and this is kind of an interesting thing. About the same time as Rachmaninoff was living, George Gershwin was also. And Gershwin also came to Hollywood, just as Rachmaninoff did. And he wrote, obviously, for the movies, but he also wrote a great opera called Porgy and Bess. And it has become probably the most famous and lo beloved of operas in English. And so we would love to do a piece from Borgi and Pes. It ain't necessarily so. And it was originally arranged for violin with piano by Yasha Heifetz. Who also lived in Los Angeles. That's and right. also arrived from Russia. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and we'll perform it on the cello and piano. Enjoy. For our final piece, we're going to go again to musical theater, but a person who loved writing musical theater is that were very much like operas. And of course, fan with the opera came upon the scene like a thunderbolt. Probably more performances of that than any other piece. And we'd like to end with the beautiful piece from Fan with the Opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber, The Music of the Night.
with that peace, we bid you adieu. We thank Redlands Ball for inviting us to play this concert. We hope you'll support the Redlands Ball. Always listen to the music of the night, right? Yes. And uh, we the music of love. The music of love and the music of the night, and enjoy the rest of the season of the Redlands Bowl. And my name is Frank Feta, and my name is Ruslan Birukov. And we bid you adieu. Thank you.